హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఈసీ అకాడమీ ఇన్ దిస్ లెక్చర్ లెట్ అస్ అండర్స్టాండ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ది మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ సర్క్యూట్ అనాలిసిస్ టెక్నిక్స్ మెష్ అనాలిసిస్ విచ్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో నోన్ యాజ్ లూప్ అనాలిసిస్ so what is mesh analysis or loop analysis this is a method that is used to find currents flowing in different branches of an electrical circuit instead of directly finding branch current we introduce new variables called as loop current or mesh current a loop current is an imaginary current which is assumed to circulate around a closed loop that will pass through all components of the loop let us look at this circuit here we are having two loops the left loop is m a b and back to m that contains the resistor r1 r2 r3 and a battery v1 the right loop from a n b back to a it consists of resistor r2 r4 and battery v2 here we assume two loop currents ia which is flowing in the left loop in clockwise direction and we'll assume ib which is flowing in the right loop in clockwise direction so both the loop currents are assumed to be flowing in clockwise directions so here you need to remember while finding the loop current you need to always assume the loop current in clockwise direction okay. now let us understand the branch current let us assign the branch current i1 i2 and i3 through resistor r1 r2 and r4 in resistor r1 and r3 the current flows due to the loop current ia in resistor r4 the current flows due to ib but in resistor r2 since both loops share this resistor so the current here will be ia minus ib so the current i1 flows through resistor r1 i2 will flow through resistor r2 i3 will flow through resistor r4 and in r1 and r3 current flows due to loop current ia and r4 current flows through due to loop current ib since r2 is common between both the loops the current will flow due to the loop current ia minus ib now let us apply kvl for left loop in clockwise direction with loop current ia here you need to remember that write every voltage rise with a positive sign and write every voltage drop with a negative sign when you move along the direction of the current now let us see what is the voltage drop across each resistors across resistor r1 the voltage drop is equal to ia into r1 since it is a voltage drop across each resistors so voltage drop will be taken as negative while writing the kvl equation the voltage drop across resistor r2 will be ia minus ib into r2 similarly the voltage drop across r3 will be equal to ia into r3 then we pass through the battery v1 so from this diagram the plus sign is at the top and minus sign is at the bottom and once we traverse from negative to positive we need to consider that as voltage rise that's why the voltage across v1 is taken as plus v1 now you need to remember that according to kvl algebraic sum of signed voltage change will be equal to zero now let us consider all these voltages and let us write the equation so across resistor r1 the voltage drop is ia into r1 so we can write that as minus ia into r1 across r2 the voltage drop is minus ia minus ib into r2 the voltage drop across r3 is minus ia into r3 
Now the voltage rise across the battery is plus V1 is equal to 0. If we rearrange the above equation, we can write this as V1 is equal to, if we send this term towards right hand side, we can write this as Ia into R1 plus Ia minus Ib into R2 plus Ia into R3. So, sum of voltage drop will be equal to sum of voltage rise. That is nothing but your Kirchhoff's voltage law. If we rearrange Ia and Ib term in above equation, we can write V1 is equal to Ia into R1 plus R2 plus R3 minus Ib into R2. Let us call this as equation number 1. Now let us apply KVL for right loop in clockwise direction with loop current Ib. Now let us find the voltage drop across each component that are connected in the loop. For resistor R4, the voltage drop will be Ib into R4. So the voltage drop is Ib into R4. Next we will traverse through the battery from positive to negative. Whenever we traverse through a battery from positive to negative terminal that is considered as voltage drop. So the voltage drop across V2 will be equal to minus V2. Since R2 is shared between two loops, the voltage drop between R2 will be equal to Ib minus Ia into R2. So the voltage drop will be Ib minus Ia into R2. So if we apply KVL for right loop, we can write minus V2 minus Ib R4 minus of Ib minus Ia into R2 is equal to 0. So we can write this as minus V2 is equal to if we send this term towards right hand side, it will be equal to Ib into R4 plus Ib minus Ia into R2. If we rearrange the terms Ia and Ib, we can write the above equation as minus V2 is equal to, if we write Ia, it will be minus Ia into R2 plus Ib into R4 plus R2. So if you multiply this with uh, negative sign, we will get V2 is equal to Ia into R2 plus Ib into R4 plus R2. Let us consider this as equation number 2. Now we got two equations, equation 1 for V1 and equation 2 for V2. We can solve these two equations to find the currents Ia and Ib. So, once we find the current Ia and Ib, we can find the branch current and branch voltages. Now, we can find branch current and voltages by solving equation 1 and 2 for Ia and Ib. Once you solve equation 1 and 2 simultaneously for Ia and Ib, you will get the loop currents. Once you get loop current, you can find the branch current through resistor R1 by using the formula I1 is equal to Ia. The same current is flowing through the resistor R1. Then we can find the branch current through resistor R2 which is the shared resistor as I2 is equal to Ia minus Ib. Then we can find the branch current through resistor R4 by taking I3 is equal to Ib. Then we can find the voltage drop across the resistors by using the formula voltage drop across resistor R1 is equal to Ia into R1. Then voltage drop across resistor R2 will be equal to Ia minus Ib into R2. 
voltage drop across resistor R3 will be equal to Ia into R3 and the voltage drop across resistor R4 is equal to Ib into R4. In summary, we can say that the loop analysis or mesh analysis simplifies circuit equations. First, you need to assume loop currents instead of branch currents. Then we need to apply KVL around each loop. And then we need to solve for loop current to get all the branch currents and voltages. Here, always assume the direction of mesh current or loop current in clockwise direction so that it keeps the equation consistent and it is easy to manage the equations. So, if we are having two loops, we will get two equations and two unknowns. And if we simplify these equations, we will get the simple solution. This is how you need to perform mesh analysis or loop current analysis step by step. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.